My 1981 DeLorean was left to rot for 32 years in an old, dusty, dirty garage in North Dakota. And as you can imagine, it was in rough cosmetic shape. But we've brought this car back from the dead by performing a restoration that took over 100 hours. So now the DeLorean looks like we went back in time and plucked it off of the assembly line at the DeLorean factory, but we haven't even gotten started yet because I haven't addressed any of the mechanical aspects of this car at all. Like with any old car, and especially one that was neglected for over three decades, this could need a complete mechanical overhaul, and we can't even begin to imagine how many while we're in there's we'll find. So there's only one thing left to do. Lift this DeLorean up in the air for the first time, see how bad it really is, and then get right to work. <laughs> But first, I have to show you guys how sketch this is because this is just kind of nerve wracking. As you guys know from the other videos, this has a stainless steel body that's bolted onto fiberglass. So the floors and everything are made of fiberglass. That's where you lift it from. So you have little metal pads at each corner. Some of them are missing. I don't really think they do too much, but I'm, I'm just lifting this from the fiberglass and hoping the car doesn't crack in half. Here we go, here we go. Please don't make any weird crackling noises. Oh. Are we off? We're off. Okay, that didn't sound too bad. So I've heard horror stories that if you don't lift this properly, it can flex and it'll crack the windshield. And we have a very rare windshield where the antenna is built right into the windshield. Only the first few hundred were like that. It's a hover DeLorean. This car is so nice. Cosmetically. So my goal in this video is to get the DeLorean to run on its own fuel system. And if you guys saw the second video on this car, you know that we were able to get it to run for about 30 seconds on starting fluid. So that's the goal. And I don't know what else we're gonna need to get this thing to run and idle on its own, but we're gonna find out together. And it all starts with an inspection for the first time with the car up in the air. Now, right off the bat, and this is to be expected, we're gonna have to revamp like the entire cooling system on this car. So the radiator and the fans are in the front of the car. And then there are a bunch of pipes with hose connections that run all the way down right here and to the engine. <laughs> there we go. It's already leaking. This stuff is in horrible condition. Luckily, DeLorean Midwest has a really nice kit that replaces all of these hoses and clamps and everything. So yeah, we're definitely going to need to do that at some point. The tubes themselves look fine. They are aluminum, but the hoses are very crusty and definitely in need of replacement. Now, when I was in North Dakota, I was able to come under here and take a look at all of the fiberglass and all of that seems to be in really nice condition. These frames were dipped in epoxy and this one seems to be pretty decent as well. What wasn't protected by epoxy was protected by DeLorean oil leaks. So I tried to clean this engine up as best as I could, but it is just caked on there like crazy. Look at the front cover and all right, yeah, here we go. We got a torn axle boot. I do have coilovers on order and all new brakes. That's for another time. Right now we're just trying to get this thing to run. So I'm looking for any smoking gun that has has to do with the engine not running. Now this shiny tube is something I installed during the restoration. This is actually for a hot air intake from the factory. Some of these old cars had this where this would be attached somewhere to the exhaust manifold and it would just send heat to the air box. Less dense air, less fuel was the idea, better fuel economy, they didn't do much of anything. And I don't even know where this goes. There's usually a little puck on the manifold and, and I couldn't find it, but whatever. I don't think we even need this. But yeah, other than that, we have our starter, we have an oil switch that needs to be replaced and a lot of unknowns once we get this thing to run. We have to remove this heat shield that was around the exhaust system, it's all destroyed. The only thing I see under here that we need to really worry about to get this car to run and idle on its own would be coolant leaks from these hoses, although. Oh, that's not coolant. That is transmission fluid. It's red. Oh, here we go. Yep, it's dripping down from the transmission and hitting this pipe right here. So, okay, that's something else we got to look into. And I'm sure we'll find other cool DeLorean things like a random piece of leather zip tied in place so it doesn't rub on this bracket. This is most likely factory. This is just how these things were built. We got a lot of crusty goodness on the DeLorean. So let's start by opening up the frunk and removing the fuel sending unit to see what's inside of the fuel tank. Hopefully nothing. All right, first things first, people. We have fender covers. As we regrain this whole car, it is in perfect condition, and I want to keep it that way. All right, there we are. Now, to access the fuel pump, we need to remove our carpet, and we need to remove our spare tire. 
There are a few panels in here. This guy can be removed. This one, if you need to replace your brake master cylinder. And this is the one we need right now. It's all sealed up with just RTV. It looks horrible, but that's just how they came. All right, guys, I'm going by hand. Some of these are starting to strip out just very easily. I don't know if someone's already been in here. I'm sure they have. Yeah, I haven't even touched that one. You can see it's already kind of wobbled out. Not a good start. No. All right, I'm gonna mess with these for a long time. And then we'll peel this guy back and see what lies beneath. This is what I'm going through, people. This one just broke off. Half of them are spinning. Let's get violent. With the slit, we can get a flat blade screwdriver in here. And this give us a ton more bite. A lot of these were just rounded off. Well, we can get this one to spin now, but it's not lifting up. So that's another issue. All right, if we put a little pressure on this, we might be able to screw it out. No. Okay. If you guys watch the restoration videos, this is one of the hardest parts of the car because a lot of everything is drilled into certs that were installed into fiberglass and everything just spins together. All right, nothing's working. We just gotta grind these off, call it a day. Okay, there we go. Looks like we have to drill the rest of these out. That's gonna be fun. I haven't even gotten to the fuel pump yet. Great. All right, I got them all out. Uh, most all of them needed to be drilled. So I'll have to deal with the studs stuck in here later. I feel really bad for future Alex. That is going to really stink. But for now, let's just forget all about it and see what's inside of this fuel tank. These screws like aren't even needed with the amount of glue they use. Oh, get out of here. That looks horrible. Look at how crusty and gross everything is. What is this? I'm not exactly really sure what's going on here. What is this? It's like a hose clamp and it just fits over it, I guess. Oh yeah, and then this is a rubber boot. Am I literally just pulling the fuel sending unit out right now? There's a connector. These are very hard, rough shape. And then we got a fuel hose right here. I'm gonna go ahead and cut these hoses here. They're definitely not gonna reuse any of that. There we go. So these are not steel braided. They kind of look like that, but they're not, they're not. These could easily be cut just like we just did. It looks like they just have a plastic sleeve over them. Oh, look at this. Look at this, guys, right here. Does this look familiar? Remember the whole debacle with removing the driver door and they don't make this gray little seal for the wires? That literally looks like that over there. Good old DeLorean just pulling right from the parts bin. That works. So we have everything disconnected, I believe. This clamp that holds the whole fuel pump assembly in is already off for us. Here we go. I can already smell the super, super old varnishy fuel. Oh my gosh, please don't have a lot of fuel left. Oh, this is gonna be bad. Ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be bad. Could this be the worst we've ever seen in a fuel tank? It very well could be. 33 years sitting around with old nasty gas from 1991. Oh man, this thing is stuck. There we go. Okay, uh, there we go. We got another hose we gotta disconnect here. Oh, this is gross. Oh yeah, good luck. Good luck, Alex, with that. <laughs> no real point in getting that hose clamp off, right? Oh. Okay, <laughs> this stinks. This pump was made in Germany. This is a massive fuel pump. It is so big. Look at that, it still says fuel pump in paper. That's hilarious. Description, fuel pump, thanks. So here's the factory fuel pump out of a DeLorean. It's seen better days. What have we gotten ourselves into? Oh, I mean, that, yeah, that's all gross and nasty and everything, but like, there's not a lot of fuel in here. That is fantastic. I never get this. All these old car rescues always have a lot of fuel in them, and then you gotta dispose of it. It's disgusting. It's a big, big pain in the butt. But what's nice with the DeLorean, it has a plastic fuel tank, so we know the fuel tank's gonna be in good shape. We don't have to drop that or anything. I think we could just clean it out from here, because we gotta make sure we get every last bit. Next, we're gonna remove the factory DeLorean fuel sending unit, and then we have to remove this crazy baffling system inside of the tank. We are gutting the entire tank in order to replace everything with this, an aftermarket fuel pump sender assembly. I believe this is a GM style sender and it contains a fuel pump that will provide enough fuel for like three or four times the amount of power that this weak DeLorean engine makes. If you were someone into that, I don't know. And it also includes this module here that we have to splice in. So the gauge works and this is powered properly. We get replacement hoses. Everything comes in this nice little kit. So this is a little pricey, but it's way Way better than trying to hunt down old DeLorean fuel pump parts that are probably gonna break on you. So the sender has a connector here. This should be a three wire, yep. Okay, now we just need to unscrew this here. Did not think I was gonna be able to do that by hand, but here we are. And we'll pull this, whoa. 
Whoa. Yeah, we'll pull this out. This is like pulling out a core sample of ice. Look at this. This is, I guess, where the last of the fuel was, but it, no, there's no fuel in this tank. This is great. This is another one of those DeLorean parts I'm just going to keep for nostalgia. Never going to do anything with this. Okay, so now we have to remove this baffle, and there is one 10 millimeter. <laughs> Did that seriously just turn? Oh, it did. I did it. Hey. There we go. Oh, thank you for being flexible. Oh, yeah, we don't have a lot of like actual fuel or anything, but we have a lot of this syrupy goo. Oh, this is nasty. Nasty. Don't touch my car. This alien planet is what we're left with. There's a random screw. That makes no sense. There's a screw there. I did not take that off. And this is just a syrupy, gooey mess that we have to clean every bit of. We are definitely gonna be cleaning house. It's gonna feel so good. Almost as good as it feels when you cancel subscriptions with one tap with Rocket Money. Rocket Money is an all-in-one finance platform that helps you save more and spend less. Check this out. Wanna save money? No problem. You pick the amount and frequency and Rocket Money automatically deposits savings into a smart savings account that you can withdraw from anytime. Wanna cancel unwanted subscriptions? Who doesn't? Rocket Money identifies reoccurring charges and gives you the option to cancel them with just one tap. They they do all the hard work so you don't have to. Rocket Money can even show you your credit score and alert you of important changes that impact your score and offer you insights on ways to bring your score up. So if you guys are interested in saving money, budgeting, canceling subscriptions, and much more, then click on my link down below or go to rocketmoney.com slash L streetcars and get started today. And with that, I'm already smelling really, really horrible. Let's get down and dirty and clean this tank. All right, I don't want to introduce any more nastiness into this, so we'll start with the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> With everything vacuumed out, I guess not everything. I'm just gonna go fishing right here. Okay, we got that. And this is hilarious. There is no reason for this screw to be in there, but it is. So it fell in at the DeLorean factory. Ugh. Okay, a washer. And there's literally just goo. There's just gooey slime. Ew. It's thick like molasses. All right. Um. <laughs> Let me just start getting rags, I guess. Okay, you know what I'm excited for is that I'm gonna be able to unleash a ton of rags that I get from people in the neighborhood, older people. They just drop stuff off. They know I'm a mechanic. I've lived in the same neighborhood like my entire life. So they just give me rags to use. So lots of like old lady kind of bed sheets and stuff. Look at that. And we're gonna, we're gonna put them to use. Thanks neighborhood. All right. So let's just see how much of this syrup we can get. Yeah, oh yeah, this is awesome. Oh, yes. This is what's happened to gasoline after 32 or 33 years, whatever. Oh man, kind of looks like blood. It's blood gas and it stinks. Oh, we might find some interesting t-shirts. What's this old guy? Hey, look at that. Race for the cure, 2010. Breast Cancer Awareness Month. That's coming up actually soon. We're gonna do something for that. That is a crazy coincidence. I had no idea that was in there, seriously. Uh, let's soak this up. All right, oh yeah. This is awesome. And for those of you wondering, it is kind of a bear to drop this entire tank. And because it's plastic and we know that it hasn't been compromised with rust, you know, it would just be way too much effort. I think we have great access right here. And we got lucky that there isn't any actual fuel left in there so we don't have to siphon anything out. We just have to use Gladys and Gertrude's home supply of rags. I guess. Those are like old, kind of old lady names, right? Gladys Gertrude. Oh, this stuff is not bad to clean up. This isn't bad. The goo is actually kind of nice. It's like any dirt that fell in there is just kind of sticking to it. There we go. All right, status update. Let's see inside. Oh, we're getting there. Look at that, that's great. We are gonna use some chemicals or something to clean inside of here, but that's looking good. All right, I'm gonna keep wiping. Okay, after wiping everything out, this is what we have. It's looking pretty good, but I'm gonna really mince it out with some acetone. But before we do our final cleaning with the acetone, I wanna cut these lines off. So just everything that we're gonna replace anyways out of the way. And I'm just gonna use a razor to make a little slit here. Yeah, and these had no clamps or anything. They're just like a tight press fit, I guess. Let's see if we weakened it enough to pull it off. Now this is nuts. Look, I've never taken a fuel line off and had this. Ah, okay. I think we can begin to see what's going on here. You can see what's under all this fabric is just this rubber. It's super hard. I wanna be gentle not to damage the barbs here. You know, we can try and just heat those lines up with some map gas. I'm just kidding, don't do that. Let's see if we can twist this off. There we go. Oh, hey, and there's actually clear gasoline in here. 
looks like. Wow, I didn't think there was gonna be anything. There we go. Okay, that's one. Well, let's take a look at what might have made it into the injectors and the fuel distribution. Okay. That's pretty normal. That, that's not too bad. At least it's not that molasses all the way through the lines. Okay, but this part I'm not gonna keep of the DeLorean. I'm throwing a lot of this really, really smelly stuff out. Okay. Number two. So this actually has a real return system. That's kind of nice. We're gonna put some acetone on a face washcloth. Bet you never thought you'd live this life, washcloth. Ha ha ha, you thought you were just gonna be cleaning pores and making blackheads fade away or something. Nope, gooey molasses time for you. All right, let's see, what does it pull up? Oh yeah, it's not even that bad. This would be the cleanest DeLorean fuel tank ever. What is this? I don't know what this is. There is this in there, just rattling around. I don't know what that is. The metal wire at the top is a static prevention device and must be left in place. Good thing I didn't just rip it out. Who says guys don't read instructions? I mean, we don't, but you know what I mean. All right, guys, sometimes you just gotta get down and dirty. I figured out a way that I could contort my body to get my arm just jammed all the way into the back of the fuel tank so I can really clean it out. And I've been doing that. Now I just have to try and get out of here. It's a good thing I, I'm a, a young man. Oh, shoot, my arm is stuck. Oh no, I shouldn't have gone past the elbow. Never go past the elbow. Oh shoot, this hurts. Uh, okay. Oh, hey, hey, what's up? What's, uh... Uh, nothing. Yeah. My arm is, um, I went past the elbow. <laughs> Never go, yeah. Never go past the elbow. There is some Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease in that black cabinet, and okay. I, I think that's the ticket. I've had this tub of Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease for 12 or 13 years, and I use it on door latches and sunroof tracks and whatnot. I've never used it to get my arm out of a fuel tank, though. I'm going to, yeah, I guess I'm gonna be the best man for this job here. It is so stuck, dude. Ah! Do you see that? That's, that's something. Oh. You want me to put 911 oh, on speed dial? Or we might. I guess I gotta lock off the arm. I don't know what they would do that would be any different than what I'm doing. Can you pop the cap off? Oh, okay. Here we go. Oh, I hope this works. <sighs> I don't even, how did you do that? I'm cleaning the ins. I gotta get this tank clean. Here we go. <laughs> no, it's not coming. Can you, can you like... Can you push it in any further? I don't wanna do that. No, I'm saying if you get some Grease oh, around I... your arm and then push it in, it might lubricate the rest right. of your arm a little bit. Have you done this before? No, I just... Dude, I am so science. stuck. Hold on, can you help me up so like I can maybe try and get a better angle? Oh, oh, oh there it is. there it's it coming. Is. It's coming. Ow. <laughs> Thank you. I've been saved. Oh my gosh. You probably lay off the gym. I think your muscles are too big for the tank. That's what it is. Thanks, dude. Yeah. <laughs> that was exciting. And I didn't even really get that much because it was so clean already. Ow. Don't do this at home, kids. Blood, sweat, and pulled muscles and lack of circulation. That's what it takes to build a DeLorean. And it was totally worth it. Look at the inside of this tank. This is a beautiful, beautiful Dorito-shaped tank. Perfect condition now. We are ready. We are ready for this new fuel sending unit. And first, I'm gonna go take care of my Son of greased up arm. On second thought, let's get a little bit of fuel through here and see if anything else comes through. Man, these new things are ridiculous. Just let me pour gas. I didn't, I didn't even know how to do this. How do you do this? Oh, these are the worst. Okay, there we go. Gasoline does a great job at cleaning, so we got a little bit back there. Uh, I'm gonna let that sit overnight and then I'll wipe it out again. All right, now I wanna see uh, exactly where all the fuel lines are and what hoses need to be replaced. So I think we have to take this whole panel off. I've been soaking it. What was that? Does that break in half? Oh wait, no. Oh no, it didn't. It's in great condition. You know we're cleaning these bolts. All this hardware is getting cleaned. So far so good. It's been sitting for a little while. Good old DeLorean stepping it up with the washers. Big washer to fit this one, to fit a lock washer, yeah. And it probably won't be consistent either. All right, last one. Oh, this is heavy. Oh, does this slide? Oh no, there's little guys holding it in. I thought it slid. Uh, hang on, I gotta put one back just to hold it. Now, this should come out. There's that. Oh man, we're gonna find dead animals. This would definitely be the place for that. Oh, oh yeah. That's a piece of North Dakota right there. Yeah, this thing was definitely driven on a lot of dirt roads back in the day. This is some good old 1981 to, to 91 dirt. They just don't make dirt like they used to. Uh, I don't know what this triangle piece is supposed to do or be for, but it looks like some kind of alien technology. Wow, this is weird. It's alien skin. It's alien triangle skin. All right, lots and lots of dirt. 
Okay, so this is the fuel tank right here. This little Dorito shaped thing with its mini Dorito shadow right there. We can see more coolant hoses here, and I haven't seen any fuel lines under this car yet. These are heater core lines right here. It's the next day, new gloves, new shirt, and we'll use a new rag in here to see what we can pick up now that the gasoline's been kind of sloshed around here. All right, yeah, we're in good shape. A lot of this stuff is just from the rim there that I caught, but no, this looks great. All right, guys, we are done. This looks perfect. Let's get back together with the fuel sending unit. Before we get the fuel sender in, we have to do a little bit of wiring, a little snip snip here. And we'll use our awesome Sonic wire stripping tools. Link down below, 10% coupon code Sonic Tools. Very good quality. A lot of this stuff is made in Germany. Now we have a lot of fuel vapors here, even though I cleaned up, so we're not gonna be doing anything with solder. In this case, we're just gonna go ahead and use the crimp connectors that are already on the harness that they gave us. We have our wire crimper. All right, I'll put the wire in there. In the crimp, perfect. And I like to set these up first, so it's kind of holding it. All the wiring, the connectors, all done. Looking pretty. This looks just a little bit better than this. Although this held up, good job. Next up are the fuel lines and the main feed has a one-way check valve. I would imagine this is to hold pressure in the system after you turn it off and it sits for a while. Although fuel pumps do that. So I don't know, this is kind of a redundancy I would imagine. But anywho, let's install this right here. These things were literally not clamped in, although that was a different type of hose they used. I like this much better. Okay, that's great. Next we have the return. Yeah, we'll give this an Alex torque. There we go. Perfect. Now before the fuel sending unit goes on, we have to remove this tape and then carefully snap in our fuel sending unit. And it says to clean up any tape goo that may be left. Nice tape. No goo. And before we put the float arm on, we're gonna get our seal on. So nice getting a nice modern fuel level sensor in here. This DeLorean's just gonna be so so reliable. I don't know about that. Now we will snap our float arm on. Click. This uses a stainless V-band to hold it in. Much better than that clamp that wasn't doing anything before. But you wanna be really gentle with the float arm. You don't wanna bend that or your gas gauge will be off. So we'll slide this entire assembly in and then figure out which way this has to point. Let's get this out of the way. The instructions say to put it in as an assembly, but I wanna kinda of see what's happening here. Now the old Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease does a lot more than lubricating sunroof tracks and getting arms stuck out of fuel tanks. Now be careful with the float arm so we don't damage anything. This is such a perfect size. This is great. And I'm gonna go ahead and take these two off. Okay, now we should be able to push this down. There we go. The seal fits right in the hole. Now I'm gonna get the stainless steel V-band clamp on, and we're gonna go ahead and hook up our hoses too. Now, I believe we need to rotate this guy. Yeah, this, I believe, needs to face towards the rear of the car. So you get the lines on, and then you kind of turn it. With this held down, we can tighten up the V-band. This is tightening on the plastic tank, so we don't want to go too crazy. Or even all the way around, we're good. And then what we're gonna do now is tuck these fuel hoses here so we don't see them, just like that, nice and neat. And then since this is where the original fuel sending unit went, we can use this nice little cap with an O-ring that they gave us and we'll screw that down. Perfect, oh, this looks great. Last step is to plug in our control unit. So we have these two connectors and then this is the main connector that goes into our fuel sending unit. And this just gets zip tied to the fuel filler hose, which is in excellent condition, no need to replace that. And they give you these nice zip ties that are built into this, really cool. What a nice setup. This was really, I mean, honestly, it was enjoyable to do this. This was so much fun. It looks beautiful. It's gonna be 10 times more reliable. I'm super impressed. Not sponsored at all by the company that makes this. I paid for this. I think it was, I don't know, like 600 and something dollars, something like that. I'll leave a link down below if you have a DeLorean, but I uh, got it from DeLorean Midwest. Like a lot of the parts on this car, I'm just really happy with it. Well, unless it doesn't work, we should probably put gas in this thing and, and see if it actually works. It looks pretty but does it do the job? And we'll pour in our 93 octane fuel. I don't really know if that's what this calls for. It is a very, very underpowered 130 horsepower V6 engine, but I'm just gonna give it, give it some 93, just in case, right? So I have one of the earlier cars with a gas flap hood, but some people say you still end up opening the whole hood to fill it with fuel. I don't know. I wanna use my gas flap, we'll find out. Anyway, uh, we're putting five gallons in here. Hopefully there's no leaks. What are the chances there's no leaks? I don't know. Yeah, okay. That's it. Uh, now, what we're gonna do before we send fuel through the entire system is we're gonna disconnect the line to the fuel filter, which we will be replacing, and we'll see what kind of brown nastiness and molasses comes out of that line. Right above the driver side axle is our crusty fuel filter. I already got my wrenches ready to go. Let's do this. 
Oh, I get it. Whew. I got it. That was a little scary, but I got it. It's gonna be okay. Everything's gonna be okay. Is that a song? Everything's gonna be okay. Na, 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 na. I don't know what song that is, but it, that's a, that's gotta be a real song. It came from somewhere, unless I just wrote a song in my head working on DeLorean. It's gonna be a number one hit single Monday. Anyway, um, okay, we have a fuel line that is turning. All right, that's loose. I haven't broken the seal yet, I don't believe. Okay, I have that nut off, and now we have to remove the clamp. I already taken out the hardware to loosen this up. Okay, there goes some more of it. All right, now that that's loose, we should be able to get this line off. Man, it's like frozen. Look, we have the nut all the way back. It's it's literally just frozen in there. And you can see some of that molasses. I want to be gentle with these lines. They're in good shape. They're not rotted out, but you can still crack one. Oh, oh, I think I broke it free. That's turning. What in the world? This is just a press fit right here to here. That's where it seals. I have never seen something like that just frozen in there. I could get a hammer, but I'm just going to keep on working at this by hand. I want to be gentle. Come on, DeLorean. I'm just trying to help you get more fuel. Hold this line and kind of, oh yeah, give it some love taps. That was my bone cracking, injuring myself with this fuel filter. I got some vice grips on here. Let's see if this will move at all. Okay. All right, now that now we're getting some movement. That's nice. Let's see if I can do a little, little dance here and get it out. Oh, it's coming out. It's coming out. It's moving. Oh, there we go. Ah, that stinks. I got it. We didn't damage the taper at all, but this thing had just been frozen in there forever, so we should be good. This is what's gonna be in the injectors, though. That's not good. Oh man, this is gonna be awesome. Try and get this off. Yeah, right. Oh man. I'm gonna try out the impact here. This should work. Beautiful thing. All right, fuel filter coming out. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, this is what the uh, fuel inside of a fuel filter looks like that's been sitting around for a few decades, 32 years. Yep. Just brown. Okay, that was uneventful. It's nasty, we knew that. And we have a banjo bolt with a seal ring we'll replace as well. I've reconnected the battery and added a fuel hose right onto the fuel line. And I'm running the hose into my drain pan. We're gonna turn the ignition on now and see if fuel comes out. Hey, all right, a little prime there, cool. There's a little bit more. Okay, so we just get, oh, there we go. There's our clean fuel, cool. So we just get a few seconds of prime. Now we got a little bit of a flow. Here's another one. Nice, nice, nice. We're getting clean fuel through the lines. That's awesome, and the lines look great too. That would be a nightmare if I had to replace them, but they're not rusted, they, they look solid. Let's do a few more. There we go, that's what I'm talking about. Okay, so now we got all the air out, uh, and go ahead, we'll, we'll do one on top of a V12 Mercedes fuel filter, one on top of a DeLorean fuel filter. There we go. DeLorean fuel for everybody. I'm really happy with that. Now we can put on our new fuel filter and we'll break a line up there and just kind of keep on going down the line. L literally like the lines down the lines. You know what I mean? Okay, we need to transfer a few things from the old fuel filter, including this 90 degree fitting. So we'll thread it out like so. Now we have to transfer this bracket that's held in with a seven millimeter and a Phillips. There we go. I just need to loosen this one up. That's all. Is this the original fuel filter? on this DeLorean. The car was in service for 10 years. I mean, I think this would have been a maintenance item, but who knows? Description, fuel filter, country of origin. I have no idea. Okay, there we go. Let's definitely clean this. Use some kind of tape in here too. We'll have to redo that. Ooh, it's nice and clean. Okay, get this wet and we do this by hand. Yeah, that's gonna take forever. <laughs> Good, look at that. Nasty side, clean side. You know I'm going a little overboard here with cleaning this bracket that no one's gonna see. To get the right speed, you can clean this perfectly on the inside. Or no one's definitely gonna ever see. Look at that, it's so cool. I've cleaned up this bracket and this fitting and we have a new piece of foam to install. I'm gonna trim this guy down just a tad. And there we go. Perfect. This is really cool. We can put the date that this was installed, replace every two years, 15,000 miles. Um, what is today? Nine, I think it's 13, 23, mileage, 16,000. According to the cluster, I don't believe it. And now we can go ahead and slide this guy in. It's all the DeLorean mileage is off. I don't trust them. There we go, push this guy on. We have a new crush washer going on. And this is a banjo bolt, and surprisingly, there's only a crush washer on the bottom. I guess that's just how they are. Okay, we'll get this threaded in there by hand first. Everything lined up. All right, we'll tighten up this banjo so we know it's in the right spot. Okay, 
There we go. Top one's tight. There's no crush washer for this. We're gonna use a little bit of Permatex High Performance Thread Sealant. This is good for gasoline. And this is just going on the threads on the outside. We're not gonna, okay. <laughs> say, we're not gonna get any in there and then I did that. So anyway, that's good. And we'll screw this guy in the bottom. Did I just do that by hand? I think I just did. Yeah, that's that's all. Is that gonna go around again? Now this one here, we're just gonna line up and thread this back on. There we go. The fuel lines are back on, lamps tightened, new fuel filter is done. Next, I'm gonna remove the air box. And we have a hose right here, and this should lift off now. There we go. Now, what we're working with on the DeLorean is called a continuous injection system, or CIS. And this is the fuel distributor, so you can kind of think of this sort of like an ignition distributor. This simply just distributes fuel instead of spark through these lines right here. So these go to these six fuel injectors. So there's a main feed and a return. I believe this is the return right here. And what I wanna do is crack that free. And right now I wanna see if I can feed fuel through this and have it flush out the return. There we go, this is bone dry. And it looks like there's actually two hoses that connect right here. I'll pop these both off. This isn't an ideal, but I don't have anything to thread into the fuel distributor. So I'm just holding a piece of hose and a cutoff bottle of rubbing alcohol. Anyway, um, this is the proper way to do it. And we're just gonna see what kind of fuel comes out. Ignition. Uh, I hear stuff, I don't see stuff. Ooh, it's gurgly. Probably going through the fuel filter right now. Oh, there we go. Woo! All right, we got something. Um, this hose is not the best, it's not the best seal. Okay, it's not the best seal. Uh, let's do that again. Okay, 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 stop. Okay, I mean, it worked, like in the sense that we were able to flush clean fuel into here, but this, this did not work. Yeah, but we're good. Okay, I'm gonna go back together here. We're not gonna replace the crush washers just yet. I do have new ones, but I don't wanna burn them up. I didn't buy extras. And I just wanna do a little experiment. Okay, we'll just tighten this up for now. It's experiment time. What I wanna do is a flow test on the injectors, and I'm going to spray a little bit of penetrating oil on them right now. All right, let that sit on there for a little while. And then these just have these clips that hold these injectors down. I've never worked on injectors like this before. Closest thing were the Mercedes mechanical injectors, which are basically the same. I've just never seen the clip. Oh, dude, that's beautiful. This injector just pops right out. Wow, that was way too easy. How bad does this look? It doesn't look bad, guys. I mean, this is rock hard. This is the seal. I mean, obviously inside of here could be a whole nother ball game, but okay, that's great. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get six little bottles like this, stick our fuel injector in like this, and we're gonna measure the flow. Now, this isn't like a DeLorean spec or anything, but DeLorean Midwest told me that if you have a properly functioning distributor and mechanical fuel injector, that if you jump the fuel pump and run it for six, 60 seconds, you should get five ounces of fuel. And then you know that the system is good. And then kind of like moving a coil from one cylinder to another to figure out if it's bad, we can move the injectors around and stuff like that. So anyway, let's um, let's continue to take these out. We got lucky on the first one. Can we get lucky on the next five? What do we got? Okay, more of the same. At this point, I'm just happy they're not like frozen and corroded up in there. That's all I can ask right now with the DeLorean. I gotta say, so far I'm digging the little clip here that holds these in. Kind of nice. All right, that's that. This side is way harder, but I got the clip with the long pick. Here is one of our injectors. There's another injector, and somewhere under there is another one. Two on the driver's side banker out. This last one is a pain in the butt, but I did get the clip to come off. This will be fun to put back in. This last one was a pain to get through, but we got it out. So we now have a total of six injectors out ready for water bottles. And I bought a 24 pack from the store and they're, you know, they're filled with water. There's only one thing left to do here and that would be hydrate. That was eight ounces. How many cups of water are you supposed to drink a day? I don't know, but that's enough. I already drank a ton of water this morning. So we're gonna dump it into here so we don't waste it. This is one of those Brita filters or whatever. Let's double filter it. It's gonna be the cleanest water ever. Okay, we're gonna do something super scientific with the legit streetcars foam cannon bottle. This is measured out in milliliters. 150 milliliters is five ounces. So this is 100, this is 200. So right in between 150. A little more. All right, so there's our five ounces. Now we're gonna pour this back in and let's see what five ounces looks like. Okay. Honestly, I thought that was gonna look like more, but it does taper there. So are we right at the sticker? Oh my gosh. We are. Oh, the sticker moves. Okay. All right, let's get rid of the sticker. There's our five ounce mark. So we'll sharpie this up and do that to the rest of them too. And now I get to drink more water that was in my foam cannon bottle. It's a new one, don't worry. Okay. I don't know why I thought I could drink the whole thing in one. Mm. 
I'm so hydrated. Okay, all six water bottles have been installed. So the injectors are just sitting right in here. And coincidentally, the injector seal is about the same diameter as the opening in the water bottle. So that's kind of nice. And to activate the fuel pump for this test, we have pulled out the fuel pump relay. I believe they call this the RPM relay actually. And it was a common issue on the DeLoreans. And look at this one. Ours is from 1981. So I'll definitely want to replace this at some point. But with this out, we can jump the harness, so I already have the wire all set up to go. This end here just needs to go into there and then the fuel pump will work. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump this. So fuel pump is running right now, but because this is closed, we shouldn't have any fuel. I just wanna wait and see if that is true. I can hear the fuel now coming over here. So now we're gonna push down and we're gonna simulate air rushing into the engine. Oh, there we go. And they're popping off, look at that. And then if we go down all the way, this would be our test. So we are at full throttle right now, and these guys are looking good. They're off to the races. This guy is not working at all. This is so much fun. These injectors are racing away. So we're gonna let this go for about 60 seconds and see what we have. But yeah, we have one completely dead injector. I gotta say the spray pattern, not the best. Keep in mind, these are really early injectors, but look at it, like that, that looks good. I'd say that injector is fine. And then you can see the difference here. This one is just spraying all over the place, but yeah. Okay, you wanna know the craziest part? This seems to be working fine. As long as this injector right here is just clogged and it's not internal to that, but this this feels good. Like the pin inside of there, it's moving and then it's stopping. Is this not bad? I, I don't know. Before we see our test results, I'm just gonna label these. One, two, three, and cylinder four, five, and six. The loser. Loser. I don't even know why I'm, let's just, yeah, we don't even need to take that out. <laughs> All right, let's put these over here. I'm gonna go throw these on the toolbox and see what we have. This is different than the other ones. Wow, look at how cloudy this is. So here are our test results. Number two, which is cloudy, is the only one that made it up to the line. These are pretty close and five is like about half. Uh, I think I wanna do this test again after we fix the one injector that doesn't work anymore because it is supposed to be a full 60 seconds at wide open throttle and I kind of opened it really slow and I believe I was a few seconds off. Not a huge deal here this isn't super scientific but let's fix that other injector in case it's messing with our total results because it could be affecting the pressure all right so we're going to remove this loser injector and it's two 12s and there are seals here and you're definitely going to want to replace these so yeah this fuel system has a ton of leak points so two times six is 12 so we have 12 of those just at the injector and then you have another 12 right here yeah there's another 12 here and then there's a cold start injector so this is the cold start injector this is actually the only electronic fuel injector on the vehicle so you have more little seal rings in here uh, there are more little seal rings in there. This is the fuel pressure regulator down here. So I don't really feel like counting this up, but let's just say there's 493 little seal rings on a DeLorean. Now, before we try and clean that fuel injector, I wanna diagnose if this is an issue with the fuel distributor or this line. So I've emptied out all the fuel. We just discarded it because, you know, that one was cloudy. It's probably all bad because that was our first flush of the entire system. But anyway, um, we have the injector out, all of our little bottles back in, and this is no injector, just the line. We have just jumped it again. Let's see, without me pushing down at all. Okay, we're good, now let's see. Um, there's some fuel coming out. Yeah, this is gonna be wide open throttle right now. Yeah, there's not a lot of fuel. So that was probably not enough pressure to have popped open that injector. Yeah, this should be destroying these other guys right now in flow since there's no restriction. So yeah, we might have a line issue here or possibly that fuel distributor. Oh, these guys are going to town, look at that, cool. Wow, it's so good. It seals up perfectly. So we have to, at the very least, pop off this line right now. So all we need to do is remove the 12 millimeter banjo. And here is our line in question. Okay, so we're gonna try and get some air going through this. I don't think we have much. No, I think there's something in this line. I added a little piece of vacuum because the rubber tip was missing on this. So now we're getting a much better seal. Oh yeah. This is flowing just fine. 
Unfortunately, I don't think it's the hose. I think we're good. Unless we just dislodge something, but I don't think so. I think we had a bad seal. Okay, so I was kind of expecting the injectors and the distributor to be bad, the distributor especially. So I have a rebuilt distributor. So I think this was about $700 and you can see here our little plunger, excellent condition. So 700 bucks and then I think the injectors are $75 each if you wanna replace them. So for about like 1100-ish, you can replace you know some of the most important parts of the fuel injection system, obviously plus the fuel pump. So yeah, a couple grand. There are some other parts here that you may need to replace as well, like a warm-up regulator and the cold start injector and stuff like that. But we're not we're not gonna go there yet. So we're gonna swap this on. But first, let's see if we can fix a fuel injector. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, what we have here to try and clean a fuel injector is quite literally a two-ton bottle jack. Now, this was kind of a homemade device and it's sold for the Mercedes-Benz CIS fuel injector. So it used to have a different tube right here that would screw right into a Mercedes-Benz injector. And we had to get creative we couldn't find anything that would fit the DeLorean injector outside of a literal grease fitting. So this part is drilled out. We added an O-ring and now we can screw our DeLorean fuel injector right on. Hopefully this seals. We haven't actually tried this yet. And uh, it has a pressure gauge and we are literally gonna use this jack to draw in our fuel in here and push it out the injector and hopefully it pops it open. So this could be used as a flow test device. And if you put a cleaner in here, you can use this as a cleaning tool as well. So maybe this injector isn't that big of a loser and it was all because of the CIS distributor. So anyway, we are going to add some pressure here. You can see it going up on the gauge and we'll be able to also tell what pressure the injector opens at, I would say soon. And and we are getting a little bit of a leak here from the O-ring. This isn't perfect. There we go. Yeah, right before 60. So it's opening at the right time. Cool. Oh, this is beautiful. This one's actually one of the best spray patterns. Yeah, that's really nice. But yeah, look at what was inside of the injector. Now what's nice is this thing was put away in 1991 in North Dakota. I highly doubt they were using ethanol fuels. And even if you're running E10, if that sits around, it'll absorb moisture and it can rust out the internals of a fuel injector and many other parts in the fuel system. So if this was 100% gasoline, which I suspect it was, and if this guy ran this tank basically dry, which I also suspect he did, I think it was very low, we might be in a really good situation with these fuel injectors. At this point, let's replace the distributor and we're gonna redo this test and see exactly how these injectors are before we clean them or possibly replace them. Okay, everything is labeled so we don't mess anything up. And now let's just go around removing some injector hoses. Ah, someone's talking to me. What's a gremlin? That's the last hose for, oh, more, more gremlin speak. Talk to me, dude, talk to me. That's like the dying sound of the CIS distributor. It knows it's getting replaced. It's like, no, I still, I was doing five of them. Leave me alone. Sorry, buddy. Five just isn't enough. This thing on five cylinders is probably only making like a hundred horsepower. I mean, we can't have that. We need our 130. We need all 130 HPs of this wonderful Renault Peugeot Volvo engine. How bad did I say all those? You guys like to correct me on my pronunciation. It's Renault, Pugo, and Volvo. Can't really mess up Volvo, I guess. There are so many lines going to this thing. It's a little scary. And yeah, we'll pop off the return again. We already did this one. And I labeled everything, not because it really matters since they all fire at the exact same time, uh, but mostly just for routing purposes. So everything looks all nice and DeLorean-y. We'll be replacing all this stuff. A little shimmy sham off. Leaking some fuel, it's okay. It's probably cleaning all the oil leaks right now. And last one is for the cold start. So this line goes right to that one and only electronic fuel injector. You guys wanna see the dumbest thing on a DeLorean? I mean, there's a lot of stuff if you guys watch the restoration series. This, this is just, why? Why? So the only thing that holds down this distributor are these screws, there's three of them, and they decided to use a flathead screw. I mean, come on, come on, DeLorean. Jeez, what if this, what if this just strips out? Okay, all right, so I'll give it to you, that one went. But still, I mean, just like a normal bolt or Allen or just something. Should be pretty long. Yep. Okay, one down. There's that. I'll just skip to this guy, see if it's gonna give me trouble. Okay. Great idea, DeLorean. Never mind. You're the best. Does it just come right off? Oh, I missed, I missed one. Uh -huh. Look at that. Whoops. 
Oh, it'll come right off. So we'll definitely be sending this back out to be rebuilt. I don't believe they make these new anymore. They're just rebuilt and there's a bunch of seals and supposedly it's a big complicated mess in here and need special tools to rebuild it and whatnot. So we just do this on an exchange unit for sure, make life a lot easier. So this plunger should drop down. It's really difficult to pull down. It could have something to do with the fact that it has fuel run through it right now. I'm not sure, but there we go. Okay, so that seems to be out all the way. And then if you look at the new one, it just comes right out. Yeah, so this one's out a little bit more and it's got a tab that stops it from going any further. That's how it was rebuilt. With this taken apart, we can get a really good look at how this all kind of works. So a lot of people think that this is the throttle, it's not, this has a normal throttle body. It's cable driven. And you can see when you hit the gas that this opens up just like that. And the reason it has this micro switch is when the throttle is closed, it hits that switch and then this is an idle motor. So then this takes over and allows a little bit of air into the intake in order for it to idle properly and be controlled by the engine's computer. So that's how that works. And basically when you open up the throttle, like so you're allowing more air in and that's what draws this plate down. And when it draws the plate down, this little cam lobe right here is moving up, which pushes up the plunge on the bottom of that distributor. And that's what allows more fuel to flow through the lines to the injectors. And right at that proper PSI, I think around 50 to 60 PSI, those injectors pop open and they all fire at the exact same time. Before we replace the distributor, we are gonna replace this seal and do some cleaning. Put a little brake clean on a rag and kind of clean outwards here. I don't want to get anything inside. And really the only sealing surface is where that O-ring is. This is all just kind of dirt that doesn't matter too much. Who am I kidding? No, I got to clean this up. Blocking up the hole though. Ah, who else knew that was going to happen? Ugh. Got to be smarter. This is what it looks like after cleaning. So we'll get our O-ring in there and we'll gently drop this guy back in place. Oh, there it is, there it is. We'll drop in our cleaned up screws and then we'll precisely torque down these flat head screws. Click, 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 clickety clack, clack, click. All right, she's installed. With the fuel distributor on, I'm going around and installing all of our banjo bolts with brand new crush washers. And then you know what I realized is that I probably, if anything, should have just labeled the fuel distributor because we can see where these lines go to. But yeah, I wasn't thinking there. But I was thinking about getting new crush washers everywhere. This is definitely something you should replace. They are very inexpensive. And we're gonna do all of these by hand. So we just use the impact to take them off, but we don't want to use the impact to put them back on or we can strip things out that cost a lot of money. Good and hand tight like that. That's good. Everything on the distributor is put back together now. And so we just have one injector that needs to be put back on so we can start testing again. So this was the loser injector that I already apologized to for calling it a loser. It's not a loser. Might be the best one we have. You're a winner. So we'll just tighten this banjo bolt now. Okay. All right, guys, I messed something up. Um, forgot to remove something on the bottom of this new fuel distributor and I already put all the lines on so that kind of stinks but this guy right here is just for shipping I don't know if you guys can even see that I don't want to take the lines off so I'm kind of just pulling it up and you're supposed to snap this little uh, see the plunger how it just fell out oh geez this tab is there for shipping so the plunger doesn't just fall right out but isn't it just gonna fall right out right now okay there we go it's back in but yeah you're supposed to remove this tab obviously this is easier when you do it off the car Okay, there's that. With that little tab snapped off, we can go right back on. There we go. Okay, all right, disaster averted. Sometimes you make mistakes. That's kind of the name of the game when you're working on cars, especially DeLoreans. Distributors back on, our test bottles are reinstalled. We're gonna turn this pump on right now. And you can hear the fuel. Let's check for leaks before we get too crazy here because we just did a lot. So far so good. We just got some air coming out of the system, I think. All right, let's just go. Let's just go for it. Full throttle. This is the one that wasn't working before. Good spray pattern. They're looking pretty decent. Okay, everything's working. All right. All right, I'm gonna shut it down. Now we're gonna actually do the test. I kind of wanted to just get all the air out of the system, make sure we don't have any leaks. Okay, we have our one minute timer set up. Let's prime the system. Here we go, here we go. I am going to press start and then go full throttle right away. There we go. I gotta say, these look 
Very strong. I really like the flow out of each one of these injectors. They are really nice. I've seen newer single hole electronic fuel injectors that don't spray as well as these do. And I think these injectors are gonna be fine. Look at that, we are off to the races, wow. Okay, 30 seconds left. This one is definitely flowing less than the others. This side seems to be doing pretty well. It's kind of hard to tell with the bottles at an angle like this. I feel like I'm like an announcer, like a sports announcer, where like I have to come up with something to say right now to show you guys the, all the action, but not have it be like totally boring. So anyway, we got like five seconds left. So my job as a sports announcer is almost done. Three, two, one, bam. All right, cool. And the results are in. Almost. I'm gonna put these on the toolbox. Oh man, guys, I think we are good. Look at, these are all even. They all sprayed out the same amount. They didn't hit my line, but keep in mind how unscientific I was measuring this. I should have a measuring cup, but I just took this and drew a line with a piece of pen where I thought five ounces was. So we just wanna see if they're all performing at the same level and they definitely are. I'd say these injectors are in excellent condition. Even though I think these injectors are in great shape, while we're in there, we have these things out. Let's clean them up a little bit. So we've just been using straight gasoline thus far and we're going to change that right now with a little of the good old performance improver from Amsoil. So I run this on many of my cars. You just dump it in the tank and I do this once a year. It's just a good fuel injection cleaner, reduces carbon and whatnot. And we are going to use it directly inside of this injector to really clean it up. So we'll screw our cap on here and we'll remove another one of our injectors. I'm gonna try something. I removed the O-ring. Let's just try a crush washer here. See if that'll seal any better. And we'll tighten this injector right onto our grease fitting. Never thought I would say that. Okay, that's pretty tight. Okay, pressure's going up. We are definitely leaking a little. Yeah, this is a great tool for cleaning and also just watching spray pattern. And it makes a really cool whale sound too. I'm pretty sure we're saying something in whale language right now. And you can see what's going on here at the gauge right at 60 PSI this opens. So you don't have to worry about overloading it with pressure. It's just gonna open as soon as it was designed to. I'm pretty happy with the flow of this injector. So let's take it off. Ready, tidy, lefty, Lucy. That's how this works. Now, another way to clean fuel injectors, which you guys have seen here on Legit Street Cars, is with this cool tool. So you would normally stick your electronic fuel injector into there. This rail would go on top. There's a fuel tank with a fuel pump in here and you would inject fuel with a cleaner through the injector and it would pulse it because you would have it plugged in. So very nice. And there's a second option on this tool, which is an ultrasonic cleaner, which on an electronic fuel injector, again, you would plug this in and it would do its electronic cleaning, which is basically just a bunch of vibrations, which you'll see here in a minute. Uh, but it would also pulse the injector every once in a while. We don't have that capability capability obviously because it's mechanical, but that doesn't mean we can't use the ultrasonic cleaner. All right, so we have our injectors in there. We're gonna dump some PI on there and we just need it enough to go right over there. Yeah, there we go. Now what we can do is turn this on. It's gonna make kind of a God awful noise. And you see those things bouncing around? Oh, look at that. Yeah, you can see the dirt just coming right off. And it's really cool. They might not look perfect after this, but the idea, and we'll move these around a little bit is what's going on on the inside of the injector. You see, it's kind of like bubbling up. So if we can see that on the outside, the idea is that that's happening on the inside as well and cleaning up any ceiling surfaces and just getting all the rust out of the injector. So really satisfying to do ultrasonic cleaning. They actually have ultrasonic cleaners for jewelry and all sorts of stuff where you can put nuts and bolts in here. Um, lots of different uses, but with this stuff and with this, it's for cleaning injectors. So anyway, we'll let that bake for a little bit and we'll see what we come to. It's probably gonna be a quite the mess in there. And that is about 10 minutes right there in the ultrasonic. So you can see all this stuff at the bottom. So it's definitely done a good job of cleaning. Now, the thing is, I do believe that the method of cleaning mechanical injectors with the bottle jack is better. This is one of those, why not do it if you have the ultrasonic? But if I had to pick, I would definitely use the bottle jack to actually spray the cleaner through the entire injector. I think that's gonna do a much, much better job. But for 10 minutes and very little work, this is pretty good. We're gonna replace all of these rubber seals on the injectors as well. Easier said than done. This guy does not wanna leave me. I think we're just gonna razor these guys off. This rubber is very hard. Get our buddy side cutters in here. Come on, dude, there we go. There's a ridge that they ride on. And these are made in Germany, Bosch. We'll clean these up a little bit before we get the new seal on. And I'll just use a manual wire brush here. And here's what they look like. And look at how nice these rubber seals are now. 
Perfect. And then we have all new clips as well. So this injector with some new seals has been refurbished, ready to go back on. So I'm all about replacing stuff, but we're gonna save about $500 on injectors right now. I don't see any reason to replace these at all. They seem to be fine. So I'll get this in here, crush washer on the other side and our injector and we'll screw it in. Had I known this car had ethanol fuel sitting in it for a few decades, I would reconsider I'd maybe replace these. But if this was just straight up gasoline, which let me know guys in the comment section, but I'm almost 100% sure that in North Dakota in 1991, this would have been 100% gasoline. If that's the case, I don't see a reason to replace these. They're fine. We've seen the spray pattern. We've seen the flow. And so they're good to go. Flow, so go. I'm a wrapper. I've pulled off another injector and I already removed the seal and the clip from this one. Might make it easier for me to tighten these up. I really want to show you guys the spray pattern. So I'm just going to hold this out a little. And this is just beautiful. I mean, this is, this is serious fuel atomization, especially for the time. I mean, wow. So obviously sequential fuel injection, what most of us are used to is much better than this. That is electronic fuel injection where the engine's computer is able to control each injector individually and only inject fuel when it's called upon due to the firing order. That's the most efficient. And before that, we had what's called batch fuel injection. So some cars would fire off one bank at a time or a group of cylinders at a time. So with that, you are left with some cylinders that are getting fuel when they don't need it. So a little bit less efficient. And then before that was this. So this is sim, I can say this word, simultaneous, simultaneous. I'm gonna pop it up on, on the screen because I've never been able to say this word since I was a little kid, simultaneous all at the same time, okay? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so that's what we have here. So it's firing all these injectors at the exact same time. So there are a lot of cylinders that are getting fuel when they don't need it, but because this is a fuel injector and because the atomization is actually quite good, especially for this year, this is much more efficient than a carburetor, which does the same thing with a carburetor. You're just squirting fuel into the intake and it's going to all the cylinders, no matter what the firing order is. So that would be kind of the worst case scenario in the world of how do you inject fuel into an engine? So this is actually a pretty robust system. And if cars aren't left to sit around for three decades, it actually worked quite well. As we can see, these injectors, I mean, 33 years of fuel. And just look at this go. Whale sounds. I think depending on what the whale sound is, it tells you if the injector is good or bad. So that, the, that's good injector. Another option, if you don't have this tool and you have all of your injectors popped up, is to simply run a pretty strong concentration of this in your fuel tank. So maybe just put two gallons in and then just run an entire bottle. I think this is good to treat like 20 gallons. And then you can use the car's fuel pump and literally clean your injectors that way, just like you guys saw with the little bottle. So you can do that as well. But if you have this tool and your injectors are out and you're going to replace the seals anyway, uh, it's kind of nice to just see that right up close and personal. So anyway, multiple ways to do things here. I was hoping that would go all the way around. It would look really cool. Let me try that again. Okay. Yeah. Now this Mercedes-Benz sunroof grease also works well. You lubricate rubber seals like this before you put your injector in. So multi-purpose, you can use it to pull arms out of fuel tanks, sunroofs, of course, and DeLorean fuel injector seals. That is very nice. Oh, that's perfect. Oh, there we go. One last clip. Yeah, we're good. We did the plugs out in Minnesota when we were working on the barn. So let's go ahead and pop this wire back in. It was getting in our way. And I'll just keep on going down the line. This is definitely the easy side. Injector goes in, clip makes noises, and you're good. Yeah, this side, uh, it's just, it's so hard to even show anything on camera. It's like basically, just imagine just and then like an hour of yelling and screaming. There's just no room over here, but we'll get it. Okay, we got that down. One click there, that one clicked. Packs it for three, yeah, we got it. Oh, that's on there. Woo, I did it. John Paxson, John Paxson, anyone? Bulls, Chicago? Shout out to all my Chicago people. Comment down below if you're from Chicago or if you've ever lived in Chicago or if you're from the Chicagoland area. We love you all. Okay, everything is put back together. We are ready to fire this up. I also popped that relay in as well. Now I did get this running for about 20, 30 seconds in Minnesota on starting fluid. Um, and it was running pretty rough. That's really not like that good of a determination on whether you know the engine is good or bad, but this will be if it starts, fingers crossed. It should start though. It started before. Now it's just on its own fuel. It's independent. What? I'm just moving these. I, I don't think we'll need them or anything. I was just gonna move them to this spot right here. 
This looks like a good spot in the shop for fire extinguishers. All right, we got Max in the driver's seat repping the new gray legit streetcars hats. Link down below. Um, Max has a seat all the way back. He is what, six foot four? Yep. Okay, so if you guys are looking to buy a DeLorean and you're six foot four, this is what your life would be like. Yeah. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, I'm, I'm not really ready, but I'm ready. Let's do this. Oh, this is so cool. Tail lights on. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and stand back. Oh! Yes! She's alive! Whoa! <laughs> it's running! We got a massive exhaust leak, but it's running! This ain't bad! We got oil pressure? Yep. 70? I'll, I'll take it. it. If it's accurate. It's actually supposed to be 88 PSI. <laughs> oh yeah, it's running! On its own fuel system! There's gotta be a massive hole, oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can see the hole in the muffler. This is cleared up. This is definitely cleared up. Max, give it a little little throttle. Like, okay, a little more. Ooh. All right, definitely misfiring, that's for sure. Accessories are turning well. Uh, no weird squeaks, it's just definitely got a misfire for sure. I think it might be clearing up a little bit. Our fuel is pretty low, that's normal. And we have good voltage, that's nice. Oh yeah, no, this is this is nice. It's not perfect, but it's definitely clearing up right now. It's just, it's hard to tell with that exhaust leak, it's brutal. My DeLorean's running! And it's got oil pressure and everything! Woo! All right, I don't want to go too crazy here, but wow. Ooh, all right. That ain't good. Let's shut it down, let's shut it down. Okay, it started running better and smoking more. I don't know what that's about. That's bad. It's not coolant. It might just be fuel, maybe. It's just running really rich right now. Yeah, it's, it doesn't have that sweet smell like coolant, like blown head gasket or anything like that. Let me, let me ponder this situation right now. Look at the shop. I mean, this place is smoked out. Wow, hold on, let's look at the DeLorean with smoke all around it. It actually kind of looks really cool. Like it just got back from time, back, you know what I mean? Back to the future. Wow, what is that? What is wrong with this thing? All right, so this is what I'm thinking. We did let it run for a little bit out in Minnesota for maybe, I don't know, 30 seconds roughly, let's just say that. And I had filled these cylinders with my concoction with trans fluid and penetrating oil and stuff like that. It's possible that that hasn't all burned away. So that could cause the smoke. And if some of it got on the plug, that can cause it from running a little rough. So we're gonna run it some more. We're gonna run it some more and I'm gonna try and give it some throttle under the hood and I wanna see if it's progressive. So when we give it throttle, when I open the throttle, if this plate is coming down like it should. So anyway, uh, Max, start her up, please. All right, so I'm gonna give it throttle. This should come down. Woo! Oh, I need my safety glasses. There's like dirt and debris flying up at me. Yeah, I mean, we can rev it up. Obviously, it's not running perfect, but we can rev it. A DeLorean! Woo! All right, so right now, we're just kind of like burning the carbon out. We're giving it what it needs. It's been sitting for 33 years. I wish it didn't have the exhaust leak because the, I, the engine's good. I think the engine's great. I'm not hearing any actual engine noises. It's just all that stupid leak. Okay. Here's something interesting. When I just do the throttle, it does kind of stop at one point. It breaks up like it's RPM limited. And then if I give it more fuel, it'll go. Okay, so I think I know what that is. There is an adjustment you can make. You have to drill something out. There's basically a hidden Allen screw that you can sync up the cam and the distributor so that the fuel is the proper amount depending on when this plate is opening. I think that needs a slight adjustment. No big deal right now. Oh, uh, this is running good now. Uh, we gotta watch our temp gauge because there's probably not much coolant in there. So we're still good. Max, just give me a warning if it gets not good. Ton of smoke still. But yeah, this engine is running really nice. I like it, I like it. Yeah, right off. 
off idle, it's smooth. And then it idles down properly. That's great. This is awesome, guys. This is awesome. Hang on. I got to sit in this thing again with it running before it gets too hot and I have to shut it down. Oh, yeah. Okay. Idle's a little high, but again, we, we might need to mess with that, that adjustment underneath there. But we're good. Look at that throttle response. It's perfect. This is so cool, guys. You don't understand. You don't understand. This is so good. This is so good. Let me know down below if you guys have ever resurrected a car that's been sitting for so long, a dream car of yours that you just wanted forever. And then you finally get it running. And you know what? The icing on the cake is that the cosmetic restoration is done. So it's not like we got this thing running and it's still all ratty and I can't like really imagine what it would be like to drive the car. Like I can, I can imagine. Like it is mint. I mean, it's not mint. You know what I mean? We did the restoration. It is really nice. Oh, this is so cool. Yeah, we are good, guys. All right, let's go check out our smoke. Yeah, this is great. That's all it was. It had to have been my concoction to uh, make sure that the cylinders were lubricated upon first start. And look at this, look at this. We're starting to even get water, condensation. That means your car is running good. I'm missing a clamp. That's why this is shaking. It's not missing anymore. Yeah, no, this is good. Hold on, let's see. Yeah, look at that. No more smoke. Max, let's shut her down. My DeLorean lives on its own fuel system. It has oil pressure. It's got an exhaust leak and a cooling system that I don't think functions like at all uh, right now, but that's okay. That's okay. We have this thing running. We saved a bunch of money by not replacing the fuel injectors because, you know, we restored them ourselves. So that's awesome. Modern fuel pump, new distributor for the fuel. And at this point, we are in really, really good shape. Now, I don't want to kind of bring this down at all right now, but there is one really major thing that we need to check in the next episode. They call it the Valley of Death. So from what I understand, when you take this entire intake off and you're looking at the V of the engine, the top of the actual engine block, uh, inside of there is a high pressure oil passage. Okay, so it's not a tube, it's not a replaceable part. We're talking about a passage in the block. And what can happen primarily with the ones that sit around forever is that if there were fluids leaking into that valley, it can deteriorate the actual block and that you're done. Like you need a whole new engine. Now, normally that makes oil spew all over the place. We do not have that right now, but unfortunately, you still have to inspect it. I was talking with Mike at DeLorean Midwest. He said he had a car where it looked perfect, everything was fine, and a chunk of the top of the block just broke off, spewed oil everywhere. So what we need to do in the next episode is take apart this entire intake, which is good because we're gonna be replacing a ton of seals while we're in there, uh, and who knows what else. And we need to really inspect this valley of death before we try to get this thing back on the road and before I can officially say that we're you know, really good. So anyway, uh, super happy. We've rebuilt the fuel system. We so far have verified that outside of the valley of death, the engine is good. And we know what we need to do in the next video. We're just simply at a, at a good point in time. So with that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this installment of the DeLorean restoration series. And if you did, give it a big thumbs up, share the video with your friends, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. It's a little red button, you just click it, it's free, and it really helps me out to make more videos like this. So anyway, with that, most importantly, have a fantastic day, and I'll see all of you in the next video. Left to rot for 32 years in a dirty garage. <clears throat> So my goal, but we may have to, but we, uh. <clears throat> so my goal in, <clears throat> all right, this is what we're going through. This is what I'm going through, people. This one broke. This is what I'm going, <clears throat> okay, hang on, we're not. <clears throat> I gotta say, <clears throat> and ironically, <clears throat> <clears throat> okay, so I, get gasoline, Gla before we get the fuel sender in, we have. <coughs> <coughs> and to <coughs> and to activate the fuel pump for and to activate the fuel pump for this test, we have pulled out the um, okay. that port um, that port. Um, what is the word I'm looking for? <coughs> 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 They sell, okay. <coughs> I think.
think I'm good.